The code for this project is available on my GitHub page, link in the description. Select the main branch if you want to write the code for this tutorial yourself or the part 2 otherwise. Before we start, I have to point out that I made some changes from the previous tutorial, like upgrading the Visual Studio Editor package to get rid of that annoying warning, using fields instead of private variables, put some underscore before the name of private class variables, and lastly, made local variables global to avoid feeding the garbage collector. The first feature that we are going to add is the variable jump height. Go inside the input controller script and add a new method to check if we are holding the jump button. This method of course needs to be implemented in the player controller by returning if we are holding the jump button and the same thing needs to be done for the AI controller. Now that we can actually detect when we hold the jump button, what remains to be done is to check for it. If we're holding the jump button while going upward, we want to stay with the lowest gravity multiplier to get a longer jump, while if we are not holding the jump button, we want to apply the highest gravity multiplier to get a shorter one. If you go now back to the Unity editor and run the game, you'll see that depending on how long you hold the jump button, you'll get a higher or lower jump. The second feature that we are going to add is the Coyote time, which is the amount of time during which you can still execute a jump after running off a ledge. Go back to the jump script and add a new variable for the Coyote time. This will represent the maximum value. Add a boolean to check if we are jumping and the actual counter for the Coyote time. This will be the variable in charge of keeping the current Coyote time. While we perform a jump, the action is not instantaneous, meaning that after pressing the jump button, there are still a few frames where we are still on the ground. So we need to check that no velocity has been added to the rigid body. If we are on the ground, we set back the value of the Coyote counter and set the is jumping variable to false. If we are not on the ground, we can start decreasing the amount of time we have left to jump. And in the jump action, instead of checking whether we are grounded, we check that the coyote counter is greater than zero, meaning that even though we may not be grounded, we can still perform a jump if there is time left in the coyote counter variable. But we also want to be able to do multiple jumps, so since we can perform multiple jumps only after performing one, we add a check for it before increasing the jump phase variable. After that, we set the Coyote counter back to zero and set its jumping to true. If you go back to the Unity editor and duplicate one of the platforms, you can use that to check if the Coyote time is working. Just press the jump button after running off the ledge of the platform and you'll see that we are still able to jump. The third and last feature that we are going to add is the jump buffer, which is the time before landing during which a jump input is still counted as valid and performed once reached the ground. As we have done with the Coyote time, we are going to create a variable for the jump buffer that represents the maximum value. Then we are going to create another one for the actual timer. Now, instead of calling the jump action when we press the jump button, we set the jump buffer counter to its maximum value and while not jumping and if we still have time left in the counter, we decrease its value. So now the jump action is controlled by the jump buffer and it gets activated when there is still time left in the counter, meaning that a jump can be activated even after having pressed the jump button, as long as the time allowed for it, it's within range. As for the Coyote time, remember to set the jump buffer counter to zero when performing the jump. Back to the Unity editor, run the game and press the jump button, right before making contact with the ground. 
If the input is within the time frame of the jump buffer, the input will still be counted when reaching the ground, allowing you not to miss a jump. Also, everything we had done so far works with the AI controller.